On Monday, Canada's decade-long search for a new fighter jet to replace its aging CF-18s came full circle when the Liberal government announced that it had entered into negotiations with Lockheed Martin, a U.S. defense giant, to purchase the F-35. Even as the end of the long search appeared to be in sight, many questions remained unanswered. How much will the aircraft cost? When will they begin to arrive in Canada? Was it worth the past 12 years of deliberation and delays? Greetings! In this video, you'll get to know about Canada's next fighter, which is none other than the F-35. So before diving into the topic straight away, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Canada is a country in North America. Canada spent approximately $34.5 billion on internal research and development in 2018. The federal and provincial governments contributed a total of approximately $7 billion. In 2021, Canada was ranked 16th in the Global Innovation Index, and in 2019 and 2020, it was ranked 17th. On Monday, Canada's decade-long search for a new fighter jet to replace its aging CF-18s came full circle when the Liberal government announced that it had entered into negotiations with Lockheed Martin, a U.S. defense giant, to purchase the F-35. The F-35 fighter jet results from Lockheed Martin's Joint Strike Fighter program, developed in collaboration with the United States government. The program is a U.S. Department of Defense initiative to build and replace fighter jets used by both the U.S. military and allied countries that work closely with the U.S. Since the 1990s, Canada and seven other allied countries have contributed to developing the F-35 fighter jet through the program, with all participants contributing hundreds of millions of dollars. Canada's contributions began in 1997 when former Liberal Prime Minister Jean Chrétien signed the country's agreement to participate in the development program. Because of the $613 million that has already been paid into the program since 1997, which allows Canadian companies to bid on contracts for work related to it, the decision to continue has been politically fraught even as cost projections have risen. In 2010, the former Conservative government claimed that purchasing 64 F-35 fighter jets would cost $9 billion. However, a subsequent audit by the Auditor General found that those costs did not account for the money needed to keep the fleet running throughout the entire life cycle. With all of those costs taken into account, the Auditor General estimated that the total cost would be $44 billion. The Joint Strike Fighter program was scrutinized in the previous decade due to cost overruns and mechanical issues. Because of these issues, the New York Times described the program's reputation as dysfunctional in a 2019 investigation, despite its fortunes appearing to be improving. On Tuesday, Dave Perry, vice president of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute, testified before a House of Commons committee about the jet procurement and was questioned about the program's history of mechanical issues. Many of the problems that plagued the program at the outset, he said, have now been ironed out as the jet undergoes upgrades to fine-tune the massive amount of technology on board. A lot of these planes are in constant upgrade mode because they are effectively flying supercomputers, he explained to the committee. There have been more of these issues resolved and worked out in the last 12 years than there were 12 years ago. Throughout it all, one word has dominated the justifications for buying the plane, stealth. The F-35 is the most advanced jet on the market, according to Lockheed Martin, with unprecedented situational awareness and the ability to operate in five different domains – air, land, sea, space, and cyberspace. Some plane models can take off from aircraft carriers and be used in naval operations, but not the one Canada is interested in. The jet also has electronic warfare technology, according to Lockheed Martin, that can locate, track enemy forces, jam radars, and disrupt attacks. As warfare increasingly shifts into the cybersphere, the company's pitch that the F-35 is the most survivable fighter jet available has been billed as central to the company's pitch that the F-35 is the most survivable jet available. It's part of the emphasis on stealth to be able to do so while ensuring that the jet's electromagnetic and radar signatures aren't glaring to enemies. In a nutshell, stealth refers to a plane's ability to avoid detection. When flying in contested areas, the company claims that this gives pilots an advantage and increases their chances of survival. The F-35's aligned edges, reduced engine signature, internal carriage of weapons and fuel, and embedded sensors all contribute to its unmatched stealth performance, Lockheed Martin says. However, it's important to note that stealth does not imply invisibility, according to one expert. I think when people hear stealth, they think of Batman Returns, said Jeff Collins, a defense policy expert and fellow at the Canadian Global Affairs Institute. No, that isn't the case. It means lowering the radar signature, which has to do with the aircraft's design and the coating applied. 
He cited Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the Ukrainian subsequent highly effective targeting of Russian fighter jets as a clear example of what can go wrong when you don't have stealth capabilities. Collins explained, They're essentially being blown out of the sky by Stinger missiles in the Ukrainian Air Force. So the aircraft's ability to minimize its radar signature is certainly crucial when overflying a hot zone when it's dealing with ground-based anti-air systems as well as opposing fighter aircraft. Questions have been raised over the years about whether the single-engine design of both the F-35 and the Saab Gripen, the second-ranked jet candidate in the Canadian competition, increases the risk of catastrophic crashes without the safety net of a second engine. Both the F-35 and the Gripen have a single engine instead of the two engines used by Canada's current CF-18 Boeing Hornets. According to a 2014 report titled One Dead Pilot by defense policy expert Michael Byers, the risks of a single-engine aircraft are amplified for Canadian pilots due to the country's remote expanses of territory, particularly in the Arctic, and challenges in rapid search and rescue functions. According to Perry, other Arctic allies such as Denmark and Finland and the United States and Alaska successfully used the F-35 in harsh conditions. He stated, we will definitely not be alone in that. In the wake of a defense policy reset sparked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Germany, which has long been compared to Canada in terms of historically lagging on defense spending, committed just two weeks ago to ordering F-35 jets for the task of nuclear sharing. Nuclear sharing is a NATO policy that allows certain alliance members to carry and transport U.S. nuclear weapons stationed in Europe if required for deployment. Only a few fighter jets are certified to participate in the nuclear sharing program, according to a December 2021 U.S. government fact sheet. The F-15E, several models of the F-16, the B-21, which is still in development, and the F-35. Fears of a nuclear attack have grown as Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened the West with nuclear retaliation for his unprovoked invasion of Ukraine on two occasions. While the replacement of fighter jets began before the invasion of Ukraine, experts say the context is important because the Canadian government requires that any fighter jet purchased be capable of serving in both NORAD and NATO missions. Collins is hopefully optimistic that the decision to enter final talks on the F-35 represents the government's recognition that buying equipment matters to foreign policy. Kicking the decision down the road is really symbolic of a luxurious era of foreign policy that Canada no longer has, Collins said before mentioning the invasion of Ukraine. It drives home the fact that this is a serious situation. We live in an uncertain world. This type of aircraft isn't just about defending the country's borders. It's also about ensuring that Canadian interests are supported both at home and abroad. Well, that ends our video for now. What are your thoughts regarding it? Let us know in the comments section below. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. See you in the next one!